Okay guys, today we're working on a 2006 Chrysler PT Cruiser. My son Bo came with me the other day uh, and we we're using a crappy camera and mic and so I don't know that we'll use that intro because we did look at this, did a preliminary look at this. We're doing a parasitic drain uh, test and we brought a thermal imaging camera in. I had my brother leave this for 24 hours, had a battery charger on it so we could see what was hot inside of it. And as you can see in this footage, you can see the instrument cluster is glowing and so is the radio. All right, so that is the radio. That thing is pretty freaking hot right now. And then I'm also seeing, that's instrument cluster. That lower part of the cluster there too. And below the speedometer, not really picking that one up as much. And my brother um, had isolated, uh, you said the IOD fuses, right? You that was the first one I did. Yeah, Hold on, put your mic on. The first one I did was just the IOD fuses, which is your like delivery fuses. They just unplug right. four of them and they're in like a caged little right. release thing, um, like some 30 amps. And that's the one that killed everything. But then from there, I chased it from there to, I mean, I could, I got to find the wire. No, it's diagram, not a big deal. I don't a, need, uh, I just remember you saying an IOD fuse and there's some bulletins on the IOD fuses, like being not seated all the way, but that's when all the accessories the work. And, yeah. and the accessories that are on there is the sentry uh, remote, yeah. you know, get uh, keyless entry, the window the cluster, the there. radio, all the stuff that, yeah. you know, my radio was glowing red or not glowing red, but you can see in these images again that it's heating up. The radio's heating up, the cluster's heating up. And that's the main fuse. When I got down to my 40 amp fuse, it was feeding the cluster and the body module. And right. at that point, I'm yeah. like, is, is the body module you know, which would, might be the, what, the totally the, integrated? The tip them, maybe. I'm not sure if that's the bottom module on this. I don't know if that's this. keeping the cluster awake. That's but, what we're thinking. You know, that's where I was at. But even, it was 1.4 amps. And even when I pulled that one out, I still only got down to 170. So there's other stuff staying yep. alive too, which made me think, you know, unless the cluster is the thing that's generating it and staying alive and keeping everything awake, I'm just not sure. That's, that's where we're where, at. That's where I stopped. That's where we're at, <laughs> yep. And uh, we brought the thermal camera in to prove, I really think the thermal camera is the way to go um, with these as far as direction. And I'm not worried about the radio, even though the radio is glowing here. I'm not worried about the cluster, even though the cluster is glowing here. I'm worried about this network that it's on. Something's keeping this network alive. And uh, did you look at that other car too? I did. We'll talk about that yeah. in a minute. All right. Um, that's my thermal camera he just handed me. Um, we're worried about a network that's staying alive on this um, uh, cluster radio system. And I want to show you guys the diagram kind of where we left off. And again, all of this we filmed already and I don't know how much of the footage is good. So that's, that's why I'm talking about it. Um, I'm going to do a, a Something I didn't do yet is a full code scan on this while I still have battery voltage. I need to get a charger on this too, Danner, because with a one a one amp draw, this thing's gonna, with the battery already being weak. Yeah, look, we got a CAN bus B, so I need to show you guys this diagram. CAN bus B was the one that we were looking at for this system. I have a CAN bus B plus circuit open stored code in this central gateway. So maybe that's why it's staying awake because it has no power to be told to turn off. I'm not sure yet. I mean, we got to worry about inputs too. Okay, I'll come back to these codes because this is going to be important. I wanted you guys to see the diagram I saw. This will be a better view of when Bo and I did this. What, what I was doing the last time I was here is I just clicked on the radio because I knew the radio was glowing. And I didn't know if this was a base radio system or if it was one with an amplifier, but in either of those, what I found in the radio system is a CAN bus B circuit on both versions of the radio. So we have a CAN network for the radio. That's the base one. And then this is the one with the amplifier. And, and this will, will matter too. Like, uh, I'm sorry, it has a uh, satellite receiver. So we have CAN bus 
on the satellite receiver and we also have it on the radio can bus b this is the the more um what do they call this the premium radio one of two let me go to the last page just to see if there's an amp here that's on the can there is so the radio amplifier is also has a CAN bus B circuit as well, and it's white and white orange. So that's where I paused and I was like, all right, so the radio's on a CAN. Something's keeping the radio alive, even though the display was off. Um, same way with the cluster. And so the next thing I did, I'm gonna go to our network diagrams and CAN bus B was the white, the white and white orange. There's multiple CAN bus Bs here. There's a white with a light blue, a white with a light green, but the white and white orange is the circuit that we were just looking at. And when we follow that, that's all of this. Let's highlight all these. And what we're dealing with bottom left down here, there's the radio. There's your satellite receiver, one up from that the right window regulator module, the left window regulator module. We have the cluster there, a hands-free module, the radio amplifier, occupant restraint control module, and the sentry key remote entry module. And then all the way up top is the TIPM, the totally integrated power module. We also have a question, Danner, on, on a transmission low battery voltage to the transmission, right? Yeah, he said- he Did was, he say those he was, happened at the same time? We don't know. My guess is it's been happening because he's been jumping it every morning and then he's driving it this way and now he realized he can't drive it because who knows how long he's been jumping it every morning. So, so the battery drain was first and then now his transmission's not guess. shifting right. That would be my guess but I didn't get a specific off of him. So. Yeah, okay, so we're clear here. Our main focus is on this parasitic drain, not necessarily the transmission problem. Can we connect the dots? We're not sure. And what I had mentioned the other day, um, when, when Bo was here with me, is that that network that I just showed you guys, I believe that that network's staying alive. And, and we're here today <laughs> we are here today to try to prove that. So that was my intent in uh, bringing all my stuff, bringing the Varus. I want to tap into that network. So that's one. But number two is I want to make sure before I get very detailed here that of those modules I just listed, we could have an input that's keeping that network alive. For example, let me show you something. As an example of an input that may keep a network alive, this has a mode where, when, you know, even without the key in, it will do this. As soon as I hit that button right there, without even opening the door, you see there's, there's a button, a switch input inside here, and look what it's doing to the window. So I'm, I'm not really even opening the door, I'm just pushing that switch in part way just giving you guys an example of an input that can keep a module alive. Obviously that's going to cause a draw because that's waking up systems and it's opening the window. So that's what I want to look for first before I start digging into scope patterns of that network and isolating it and finding out what's, which modules keeping it awake. I want to look back at that diagram and see if it's possible that I can identify an input problem on the scan tool. And now this is the first time I've checked it and we have fault codes for this CAN-B network. So let's look at those codes.